if you have a website that you once used 10, 25, whatever years ago and it's been deleted, chances are it's been archived by the Wayback Machine. So you can come here and search for it. And if you find an archive file of that website, then you can download it and then you have your website back. Isn't that amazing? I used to have a domain name that I have used before. It has expired. It's davsbrook.com. Let me just use this as an example. So I'll type in davsbrook.com into the search bar here and I'll hit the enter button. And then I can see that these have saved nine times between 2018 to 2024. Uh, so right now let's just go back as uh, let's go back to 2020 here let's click this coming here we see a snapshot date here but this is green anytime you see green uh snapshot here it shows that there was a crawl but it wasn't a successful crawl this is most likely going to give us a broken website so i would not rely on that let me just come back a little more let's come back to 2019 i still can't find something this is green too as well this is not blue uh, maybe I should come back to, or maybe we'll just use that like that. Let's see what we have really. All right. So this is the website here. Uh, so if you come down here, you can see, so you can see the social icons here are not loading properly. So maybe that's why it's a green. It wasn't a successful crawl. So I was expecting for some anomalies. And that's fine. But the website so far is been good. So in your case here, if you are trying to work on a website that has both a blue on the green crawl so go for the blue the blue means a successful one uh, that will give you something extremely close to what your website looked like at that date uh, so right now i think i'm going to just work with this uh, so let's come to the about page let me see if that has been crawled successfully okay good so we have the about page here this is not bad I think I'm satisfied with this and I want to work with this. So in your case, you might want to spend time here to do your due diligence to see that you are trying to recover your website back at the right time. So right now, for us to recover this website back, there are some tools you can easily use. For example, a website here called the Wayback Machine Downloader. So if you know that the pages of your website is less than four or four, uh, you can use this tool literally for free. So if you come down here, you will see you can just paste the archive URL here. Just come back here, copy this URL and then paste that here and then put your email for delivery and start scraping so you can see the free version has up to four page limit so if you're downloading more than that you pay a little token of maybe 19 dollars uh, if you come down here you should be able to see that as i told you you can see 19 dollars here for just one website so you can see the prices for different websites so on that website here is called akiveris so here again is the same thing you can plug the domain here, put the timestamp, then put your email, and then you can scrape. Uh, but I think this is limited to about maybe 200 files too as well. The good thing about it is that you can use these tools for free, but they are quite very limited. So but in this tutorial, I want to show you exactly how you can scrape this by yourself without relying on tools like this. To be able to do that, we're going to use a tool here in GitHub. So you can come to GitHub here. There's a tool called the Wayback Machine Downloader. I'll leave the link to all of these tools in the video description. You can check them out. So once you come here, what you want to do is to come to this code here and download the zip. This is downloaded here. We are going to unzip this. But before we do that again, we need to still install another software. It's called Ruby. So the Wayback Machine installer would need Ruby to be able to work well. So to download Ruby, you can just come down here. You can see with dev tool here. So I will download this. 64-bit is fine. That's my system here. So I'll click this. We can start extracting this. Good. So I have these uh, already extracted and I think this is fine. Uh, so I can just come back to my downloads here. I have this here, but I can just easily just drag this into my desktop. I love to have this on my desktop. So the next thing we want to do now is for us to install Ruby. So we're going to click this. Uh, yes, let's run this anyway. We can see here that Ruby is installing into our PC. So we're going to give this some few seconds to finish up. So we have our Ruby installed. So let's hit the finish button. And then immediately we have our prompt here opened so we can see Ruby. Uh, let's just maximize this. So for us to finish our installation, there is something we want to do. 
Now what we want to do is to install the base installation, which is one. So I'm just going to type one and then I'm going to hit the enter button. Good. So we have this done. As you can see here, it says uh, seems to be properly installed. So for us to be able to use Ruby here to download from the Wayback Machine, we just need a prompt. And that prompt is super easy. It's not something you should worry about. I'll leave it in the video description. But for us to get that prompt, uh, let's close Ruby and let's go back to GitHub. Getting to GitHub here, if you scroll down, you would see uh, the installation path. We'll see the first prompt here. Let's copy this. And then let's start a command prompt by Ruby. You can just type in search for command prompt and then I'll paste that here and then click the enter button. Good. So we can see that uh, this has installed the Wayback Machine Downloader. So now we can use the Wayback Machine Downloader. Basically, we want to focus on the usage. So you can come here, you will see that this is the prompt for you to be able to download any website using Ruby. So right now you can just put the Wayback Machine downloader and the URL you want to copy. But in our case here, we want to download the specific time on the Wayback Machine. So coming down, we would see that we have several options in terms of usage. Uh, so, but if you scroll down, you would see that we can do all timestamps so you can see what that looks like. But we want to download from an exact time here. You can see something like a web archive here. Uh, so this is an example of what it should look like. The Wayback Machine Downloader, the domain we want to download and from the exact time that we want to download it. So now let's copy this. Uh, let me just uh, use my notepad here. Let's paste that here. So now let me change this domain name to my domain, which is dapsbrook.com. And then let me come back to the Wayback Machine. We can just copy this time here. And then we can replace that here. So this is the exact prompt that we are going to input into Ruby. So we're going to copy this. Uh, I will leave the link to this in the video description. I can close this. I can go back to Ruby and then post that. So inside Ruby here, I'll paste our prompt and then I'll hit the enter button. So as you can see that this is downloading uh, this domain from the Wayback Machine. And this is amazing. This is getting snapshots. So this might take some time to finish up. So we're going to just give you some time. So you can see it says here download complete in 725.71 seconds saved in website slash dabsbrook.com. So 42 files have been downloaded and super simple, easy uh, uh, crawl here on the Wayback Machine. Also be able to find our uh, website files here. I would just suggest that you type in website, search for websites in your computer and then you should be able to see this file here. I can just come here, I can just search for website. So right now you can see I have uh, a folder here, website. So let's open this up. And then you can see the path here for your local digs, your user, and then to website. So you can save that if you want to. So this is our website file here, dabsbook.com. Let's open this up. So you can see everything has been copied here. I, it was a WordPress website. So you can see we have our WP include files here, our WP content. Uh, so this is the home page here this is the about page here. if you open it up you would see that you have the index.html but in my case here i might just want to rename this as maybe about.html uh, that would help me know how to sort things properly in case i want to maybe upload this to a live server uh, so let's come back uh, if i open this up too as well so you can see index.html i might want to rename all of this and i think those are the things that you might want to do depending on how uh, the crawl was structured but I think this is pretty much super simple and easy. Uh, so there are a lot of things you can still do with your downloaded website. And I've covered a lot of tutorials around things like this on this channel. I don't want to waste time doing this. If you want to edit this uh, HTML website, I have recommended Blue Griffon. I've done lots of tutorials around Blue Griffon for you to use a visual builder to edit uh, this website and also to upload it to a live server super simple and easy things to do just check the video description you will see a link to that video and that's my time for this tutorial if you find it very useful give me a thumbs up if you have any issues using this tool let me know in the video description i'll look out for them i'll see you again and until then peace.